I think language is a powerful tool and uh, very important how we use story, how we use language, how we describe what it is that we do in everyday language. So when I talk about determinants of health, I usually talk about social and economic conditions. I particularly talk about the conditions that hinder health as well as those that help health. Um, I talk about um, um, fairness and unfairness. I talk about um, giving every child a ch better chance. Um, and I try to help people think about what it is um, that they care that their own family and loved ones and friends and neighbors have and have access to, either because they already have it or because they don't. And, um, and we're all in this together. And I also try to talk about um, the societal benefit if the gap between the healthiest and least healthy, the wealthiest and least wealthy is narrower, we are all better and all healthier for it. I explain the social determinants of health using a phrase that I picked up at a summer institute a couple of years ago when it was looked at as the causes of the causes. And I try and help people understand that when you look at uh, any Inuit community, you have to look at it in the context of the social determinants that have either impacted historically or continue to impact on that community. And it helps people then to understand why things are the way they are. Um, it can be so easy to judge and when they do, when they look at it with, with that lens, often I find they have a far greater understanding. And I hope then in their interactions with people that they're, uh, they're, they're bringing that more understanding approach to the issues. So the same story gets extended around social determinants of health because, you know, so the way um, that we describe social determinants of health is that the social determinants of health are the things that set the conditions in communities for good health to arise or not. So when we are looking at the top level at uh, what the health outcomes were, in public health practice and population health work, we get to ask the question, why do those health outcomes exist? And the more you ask the question, why, 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 you peel it back to determinants of health that are at play in individual communities. And so that's how we get at them, is through asking those, those why questions as we see the population getting sick in groups or having the potential to get sick in groups. Well, the one that I often use um, is the, the question I, I asked actually when I went to Jamaica, where I, I do some work with the University of West Indies. And I asked them to tell me about the, some of the historical um, factors that influenced health in that population. And without uh, a heartbeat, um, missing a heartbeat, they said slavery. They understood the historical uh, factors um, that have created some of the, the power dynamics and the class and uh, some of the racial issues that they continue to experience in that country. And of course, in Canada, um, we know now all too well that residential schools among our Aboriginal people um, is one of those examples of a historical determinant. And I think this is really important for us because we have tended to sort of um, pay more attention to some of the contemporary determinants of health, uh, and those are very important too, but a lot of them have deep historical roots. Even looking at the buildings in our built environment, you know, when you build uh, freeways through parts of the city or you build um, buildings that are not particularly uh, safe, uh, not accessible to people with disabilities and so on. That's a structure that stays in our community, in our environments for a very, very long time and continues to exert its influence long beyond the time when the building is open or the freeway is open. So as we move into a word like health equity, I think it gets confused with equality. And when we're talking about equity, maybe it's just about fairness and, and again, allowing to live. And I always use the idea of the runner. And so if you're on the inside lane, you start here. And if you're on the outside lane, you start here. Because then it's only fair. And again, bringing that term fair, it's fair then to have your race in that way. And I like that analogy because it's like, okay, fairness. People can pretty well understand that. And I constantly go back to that when I'm teaching public health or what have you, up to that example, because I get them confused myself. I guess my view is that uh, you know health equity is, uh, is something that we're continuing to learn about. Um, it's not a, a static field where you know we know everything we need to know. There's there's still a great deal to be learned. And just as one example, some of the work that. 
Clyde Hertzman has done in British Columbia, where um, through the work that they've done in the early childhood development field, they have a, we have a much better understanding of um, social causation, what it is that that creates uh, some of the, um, the d situations of disadvantage and what creates situations of vulnerability.